What if you slept? And what if, in your sleep, you dreamed? And what if in your dream, you went to heaven, and there plucked a strange and beautiful flower? And what if, when you awoke, you had that flower in your hand? Ah, what then? Common sense, in an uncommon degree, is what the world calls wisdom. Advice is like snow. The softer it falls, the longer it dwells upon, and the deeper it sinks into the mind. Our own heart, and not other men's opinions, form our true honor. He who is best prepared can best serve his moment of inspiration. A great mind must be androgynous. What comes from the heart goes to the heart. Nothing is as contagious as enthusiasm. It is the real allegory of the myth of Orpheus. It moves stones and charms brutes. It is the genius of sincerity, and truth accomplishes no victories without it. Language is the armory of the human mind, and at once contains the trophies of its past and the weapons of its future conquests. No man was ever yet a great poet without at the same time being a profound philosopher. I have seen gross intolerance shown in support of tolerance. Deep thinking is attainable only by a man of deep feeling and all truth is a species of revelation. If we could learn from history what lessons it might teach us. But passion and party blind our eyes, and the light which experience gives us is a lantern on the stern, which shines only on the waves behind us. No mind is thoroughly well organized that is deficient in a sense of humor. Prose, words, in their best order. Poetry, the best words in the best order.
works of imagination should be written in very plain language. The more purely imaginative they are, the more necessary it is to be plain. Little is taught by contest or dispute. Everything by sympathy and love. Good and bad people are each less so than they seem. A man's desire is for the woman but the woman's desire is rarely other than for the desire of the man. Swans sing before they die. T'were no bad thing should certain persons die before they sing. Sympathy constitutes friendship, but in love there is a sort of antipathy or opposing passion. Each strives to be the other, and both together make up one whole. The happiness of life is made up of minute fractions, the little soon forgotten charities of a kiss, a smile, a kind look, a heartfelt compliment in the disguise of a playful raillery, and the countless other infinitesimals of pleasant thought and feeling. To see him act is like reading Shakespeare by flashes of lightning. There is nothing melancholy in nature. Until you understand a writer's ignorance, presume yourself ignorant of his understanding. Nature has her proper interest, and he will know what it is who believes and feels that everything has a life of its own, and that we are all one life. Everyone should have two or three hives of bees. Bees are easier to keep than a dog or a cat. They are more interesting than gerbils. They stood aloof, the scars remaining, like cliffs which had been rent asunder. Willing suspension of disbelief. A sight to dream of, not to tell. Not one man in a thousand has the strength of mind or the goodness of heart to be an atheist. I readily believe that there are more invisible than visible natures in the universe, but who will explain for us the family of all these beings, and the ranks and relations and distinguishing features and functions of each? What do they do? What places do they inhabit? The human mind has always sought the knowledge of these things, but never attained it. Meanwhile, I do not deny that it is helpful sometimes to contemplate in the mind, as on a tablet, 
the image of a greater and better world, lest the intellect, habituated to the petty things of daily life, narrow itself and sink wholly into trivial thoughts. But at the same time, we must be watchful for the truth and keep a sense of proportion so that we may distinguish the certain from the uncertain, day from night. The act of praying is the very highest energy of which the human mind is capable. Praying, that is, with the total concentration of the faculties, the great mass of worldly men and of learned men are absolutely incapable of prayer. Experience informs us that the first defense of weak minds is to recriminate. I should much wish, like the Indian Vishna, to float along an infinite ocean, cradled in the flower of the lotus, and wake once in a million years for a few minutes, just to know that I was going to sleep a million years more. The reader should be carried forward, not merely or chiefly by the mechanical impulse of curiosity, or by a restless desire to arrive at the final solution, but by the pleasurable activity of mind, excited by the attractions of the journey itself. You appear to me not to have understood the nature of my body and mind, partly from ill health and partly from an unhealthy and reverie-like vividness of thoughts, and, pardon the pedantry of this phrase, a diminished impressibility from things, my ideas, wishes, and feelings are to a diseased degree disconnected from motion and action. In plain and natural English, I am a dreaming and therefore an indolent man. I am a starling, self-encaged and always in the molt. And my whole note is tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. That willing suspension of disbelief for the moment, which constitutes poetic faith. He was, as every truly great poet has ever been, a good man but finding it impossible to realize his own aspirations, either in religion or politics or society. He gave up his heart to the living spirit and light within him and avenged himself on the world by enriching it with his record of his own transcendental ideal. If a man could pass through paradise in a dream and have a flower presented to him as a pledge that his soul had already been there, and if he found that flower in his hand when he awoke, ah, what then?